quick questions. Can, can, can you, can you, there was a, um, can, can you then give your name oh, and who you represent? Sister Mary Trainer oh, yeah. from Orange, I chair the Community Reference Group for Mental Health, Drug and Alcohol Services. Um, the MOU, Memorandum of Understanding regarding chaplaincy was signed off and we've said will be and what a marvellous thing has happened because it's finally come through, whoopee. However, I'd like to ask, maybe it's Professor Mary, I don't know, someone might be able to tell me what provision exists for the payment of stipends for chaplaincy. There are, in lots of places, the big hospitals, I'm not talking about little country hospitals, they don't need paid chaplains. They know that, we know that. But there are probably two or three, three big hospitals that we have and it appears there's no funding. Would somebody like to respond? We will. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> um, well, I'll definitely take that on notice. Um, as you may know, Sister, of course, I've, I've spent a large part of my time in the Catholic healthcare system where we do pay stipends for, for um, chaplains, but that was under our own private auspice. Um, and I'm, I have to confess that uh, I'm not sure what the arrangements are within the public sector, but we'll find out for you, so if I can get your details. But I would like to commend the chaplain CMOU because it is a very important part of people's experience when they're in hospital because it is a time of distress and as well as people having immense physical needs at that time, there's a whole ho a lot of other needs, both emotional and spiritual, that need to be attended to. So it is something that we do take very seriously and I'll answer your question, find an answer on your question on stipends. Thank you. Second question. Um, a while back, the entry to Bloomfield Hospital from Huntry, Huntley Road was arbitrarily shut. Now, there's been a lot of agitation, a lot of politicking going on. <clears throat> However, the thing is still shut. Now, what's it affecting? It's certainly affecting the um, roads within the hospital. They were so full of potholes you nearly took your life in your hands. <clears throat> um, the traffic coming through to um, uh, all those sporting things they have there on the grounds, <clears throat> taking up a lot. So. Why is it at a stalemate? I don't know who'd like to answer that. Lynn will answer. Mr Mary, as you know, when they built the hospital, um, one of the conditions was that that road had to close. Yes, but there was no consultation, was there? That was part of what was in the DA and the council, was that that road had to close. So that's why it's closed and that's why it hasn't reopened. Well, it's ridiculous that it's opening. Sorry, but that's part of the rules that we had to follow. Well, who made those rules? It's a council, apparently. Yeah, I, was well, I, I just had a note handed to me um, from the local member, um, Andrew oh, G, boy. and it was raised while I was in Orange in December. And I understand that Health Infrastructure is currently talking to Orange City Council about the problems that you've very well articulated. And uh, I think with pressure from people like you, somewhere something might happen. Well, I do hope so. Now, can I ask you yeah, the first question? Yes. The, uh, three. the trinity of questions, yes. Um, why is it that people who have a diagnosed mental illness, who have lived for many years in registered boarding houses, and some of whom have recently been arbitrarily and summarily removed, are being cared for by intellectual disability services. Now, what the Dickens is health doing, I was going to shoot this one at the Minister for Mental Health, but he's not here. Um, so I think we'll shoot it at the Minister for Health. Um, why are those mentally ill people, some of whom live here in Dubbo, under the care of disability services. Thank you, sir. This is the when I go to the pearly gates, can you be my advocate? <laughs> I'm sorry. Sister Mary, I'm quaking. <laughs> no, look, I'll have to take that and I'll get uh, Kevin to provide an answer for that. Um, 
yeah, really, that's the best thing I can do for you. If you want to send the question. Of course, when you write up. letters to people, all you get back is a thing, your letter is from some secretary or other. <laughs> your letter has been received, doodle doodle doo, and that's it. Well, I can assure you that having heard you today and how forcefully you put your arguments, you'll get an answer. Thank you. <laughs>